and welcome to the latest episode of The Good Gram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, as promised, uh, a midweek episode of the show, you lucky people. Um, I mean, what else am I going to do on the day off? I'm going to sort of talk whiskey, <laughs> like every other day in actual fact, but uh, um, no. Uh, t today I thought it was a really nice opportunity to... Um, kind of show you some new stuff that's that's recently come out or recently come my way and there's a couple of old bottlings as well thrown in just to sort of make up the numbers which well, I'm, hopefully that's not a derogatory term but hopefully they'll be, be interesting um so today we're looking at um blended whiskey um what well, in actual fact only one of them is actually a blend the rest are all what i would term as vatted malts or what we have to now call them as blended malt whiskey uh to keep those that um those that draw up the regulations happy you know anyway so I thought we'd look at uh, a range um, from relatively inexpensive to relatively expensive. And uh, obviously, as you can see from the title page, uh, we've got a couple of the new Compass Box bottlings. So big, big thank you to Compass Box and Herman for, for the samples. And, and we're not talking piddly little samples, but nice, generous sized samples. So I can taste them and I've got plenty left over to do an episode of the show with. Um, also, a couple of other ones that uh, kind of came my way. Uh, one I tasted for the uh, the, the current, uh, or the, I think it was the yeah, the current issue of the uh, the whiskey magazine, and uh, one was just a, an old one, but a good one, hopefully. So, um, so yeah, like I say, um, I, I like. I'm a big fan of blended and vatted and whatever you want to call it, whiskey. I mean, it's like I, like I keep saying to customers, and I keep saying, um, it's all about the quality ingredients you put quality ingredients together balanced and hopefully you get a quality balanced product at the end of it something that doesn't exist naturally uh within nature something that's maybe designed uh for a certain flavor profile or something like that and and i can imagine it's great fun um and um quite re quite big responsibility obviously it's not like you know you make a uh make your malt whiskey choose your cask and bottle it you know job done you know you've got to especially with the bigger brands uh you obviously have to have consistency and as we know it's a natural product and it doesn't always conform to the same standards and that you would probably had in the last bottling so a, a lot of jiggery pokery as they say but anyway um so you know like i say don't turn your nose up at good quality blends and good quality blends do not have to be old and expensive and certainly uh, the old Perth which is bottled by uh, Morrison and Mackay which I think off the top of my head retails for about 26 95 I think is, is a good example of a young good quality blended whiskey so anyway um, I think that's probably enough it's waffle I'm it's going to take some time obviously uh, explaining each of the bottlings certainly the compass box because the list of ingredients is pretty damn big certainly with um, the three-year-old but anyway we will we'll get on to that in due course so let's introduce today's little lineup Okay, so as I was saying, uh, we're going to kick off with the Old Perth, which is bottled at 43%. This is uh, produced by Morrison and Mackay. This is batch number four. And this is a nice idea, I think. Um, it does kind of free you up from the whole sort of having to get it exactly the same every time round. Give it batch numbers. Therefore, if there is, you know, a malt that you can't get hold of, um, or you happen to use a different proportion of certain malts, then just give it a different batch name, you know, brilliant. So anyway, um, like I said, this is kind of, you know, inexpensive, um, but it's made up for some interesting malts. In actual fact, I mean, one of them is Knock Do. Now, um, as far as I'm aware, Morrison and Mackay in the um, strictly limited Carn Moore range are the only people that I've ever seen have bottled a private Knock Do. Where they got those casks from, I have no idea. Um, also making up the blend is uh, Altmore, uh, Blair Athol, which I'm guessing is probably going to be Sherry Cask, and Tula Bardeen, which could give it a bit of a, you know, nuance, shall we say. So that's what we're going to be kicking off with. We're then going to move on to the Spice Tree Extravaganza, which is, according to the blurb, a um, uh, limited release of just over 12,000 bottles, bottled at uh, 46% and it's a 
a special version of spice tree and um, the list of ingredients is pretty long um, and there's a lot of things I'm not actually allowed to tell you like where the whiskey's come from uh, oh I can on this one I can't on the other one but I can't tell you the ages it's just ridiculous really isn't it it's sort of like you know you have a company that wants to inform their customers about what they're using and the powers that be just won't let them do them so it's just completely bloody ridiculous but anyway so um as you know spice tree is partially matured in their their hybrid casks uh you know american oak casks with french uh end pieces um but the um the full rundown is there's 32.6 percent of uh glenord first fill sherry matured uh then 17.2 percent of uh, Ben Rins, which again first fill sherry matured, 2.6% uh, um, of uh, malt whiskey from hmm, Alt Levine, <laughs> I just couldn't quite read the, the, it's all printed very small on here, uh, which has been um, aged in refill American standard barrels. Uh, then we get um, three components which have been aged in uh, their hybrid casks. Uh, the first is 27.7% of um, Highland Malt Blend, uh, which has been aged in light to medium toasted hybrid casks. Uh, then we get 4.3% of, again, the same blend aged in refill hybrid casks. And finally, we have 15.6%, again, same Highland Malt Blend, aged in heavily toasted uh, hybrid casks. And so... Uh, as you probably know from tasting the standard bottling of Spice Tree, it is the hybrid cask, it's the French oak that really gives it that tight kind of spiciness. And so, um, as far as I'm aware, uh, the components are obviously a little bit older than the components that go into the standard bottling of Spice Tree. So it'll be interesting to see if it, you know, how that one kind of pans out. So, right, okay, so the next bottling, um, I hope you can still... I hope you're paying attention in there at the back. Anyway, um, the second bottling is an old bottling. It was bottled in 2011, in actual fact. It was the first uh, release of AD Rat Trace Blended Malt, uh, i.e. Batch 1, bottled at 55.8%. Um, the components were pretty much straightforward, in actual fact. There was four uh, single malts, which were a minimum of 19 years old, uh, all aged in sherry cask, uh, and then vatted together, married in ex Ben Rinnis uh, sherry cask for a further nine months. So we have um, 1991 distilled Ockentoshen, 1990 distilled Balblair, 1989 distilled Ben Ryak, and 1991 distilled Bamor. So, uh, bottle, like I said, bottled at 55.8%, so hopefully it should be interesting. Right, okay, and the next one we'll be looking at was a complete and utter surprise, came totally and utterly out of the blue from those lovely people at the Blended Whiskey Company. Um, this is their new release called the Half Century Blend, and like I said, this is the only actual blend rather than vatted malt that uh, we're looking at today, and uh, it is bottled at 55.5%. I think it retailed for about £600 a bottle. Um, but then you've got molten grain uh, all over 50 years old or a minimum of 50 years old. I don't know the components. They haven't uh, let on as to where it came from. But yeah, we'll, we'll see if it's um, worth the price tag then, shan't we? Uh, the next bottling we'll be looking at... Well, this was quite a difficult one, trying to figure out which way round to do them, but I've done, the, obviously, I've decided to do sort of, although there is a bit of Bamore in, in here and uh, in you know, the third bottling we'll be looking at, but the, the, this, we're, we're looking at the sort of the more either centric uh, or peated malt bottlings at the end of the row. Uh, this is from the Lost Distilleries Company. Now, this is a kind of a nice idea. I don't know if you know the Lost Distilleries. I mean, I don't know them personally. I've had no dealings with them. Like I said, this was a sample that was uh, sent to the Whiskey Magazine, which I reviewed in the last uh, last magazine. Um, the whole raison d'etre for the company seems to be researching uh, distilleries that, that existed back in the midst of time and are now no longer here then kind of trying to figure out what the spirit would have tasted like by analysing, you know, things like the, the stills, the, the, the um, casks they were used, the strains of barley, yeast, yada, yada, yada. I mean, this is real Geeksville stuff, it has to be said. And then they go and try and find um, uh, malt whiskey that kind of 
they can put together a, a, which would fit roughly their idea of the flavour profile. Um, and of course, you know, nobody's going to know whether they're right or wrong or not because a lot of these distilleries, like this particular bottling, which is called the Classic Losset, which was a distillery that was on Isla and ran from 1817 to 1867, there's nobody's going to know. You know, it's not like. Um, Patterson with his Shackleton blend, you know, he actually had a bottle of the real McCoy which he could analyse and, you know, all that kind of stuff and then come up with a blend. These guys are obviously just kind of, you know, figuring it out on the hoof, so to speak. I mean, I know there's probably a little bit more scientific than that, but uh, um, anyway, so we've got no idea what Lossett Distillery um, really tasted like, uh, but, you know, we'll see. You know, if it's a, a nice quality blend or not then. And finally, we'll bookend it with uh, the 30-year-old deluxe bottling from Compass Box. Uh, this is has a few, only a few components. Um, it was only limited to just over 3,000 bottles, bottled at 49.2%. And if you can get your hands on one now, well, good luck to you, because it disappeared like that, you know, as Compass Box bottlings tend to do. Now, um, this is kind of... Um, a bit of a piss take. I mean, everybody knows about, you know, John Glazer versus the um, Scotch Whiskey Association, etc, etc. This has been rumbling on for donkey's years. And as you know, that if you, you make a blended malt and want to put an age statement on it, then you have to give it the age statement of the youngest component within that blend, which happens to be a three-year-old. So therefore, it's a three-year-old blend. The reality is, of course, that it contains two other whiskies which are considerably older than three years old. Um, so the, the and in actual fact, it's only 0.4% of the three-year-old um, Highland malt from the village of Brora, which has got to be Klein Ellish. Um, and um, that has been aged in uh, first fill American standard barrels. The second component, which comprises 90% of the blend, again comes from the village of Brora and is um, considerably older. So, logic dictates it's either going to be old Klein Ellish, um, or if it's got a slight smokiness, which I'm just kind of giving the game away a little bit, it's going to be old Brora, isn't it? Mmm, didn't say that. Um, and finally, the last part of the blend, it comprising 9.3% of it, is first fill sherry matured malt from the Isle of Skye. So, how many distilleries do you know on the Isle of Skye? Anyway, I don't think I need to name it, do I? Um, so anyway, this is today's tasting. I think this is going to be really, really interesting. So um, should we kick off with the Old Perth then? Right, okay, so let's see what the nose gives us then, shall we? It's youthful. Obviously, we go. We, you know, there's no getting away from that. We know it's going to be fairly young. Um, it's got some nice crisp, crunchy barley. A little bit of herbal notes kind of coming through from the uh, the sherry cask. It's got a, a richness. It's got a, a kind of alt y kind of depth. You know, that sort of slightly malty, rich kind of character. There's a a little bit of faintly um, industrial note which is probably coming from the Tula Bardeen and obviously the, the sherry Blair Athol is giving you the, um, the, 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 sherry, the sherry notes. I mean there's, there's a crispness there as well which I'm guessing is probably coming from the Knock Do. Um, all right I think this is just a, a, a pleasant blend you know it's got you know plenty of interest plenty of complexity it's not particularly old, there's no real sort of um, oxidation character, dried fruits, all that kind of stuff. It's, um, you know, bits of pants out of teachers or bells or something like that, it has to be said. Um, this is just really nicely put together. Let's see what the, the palette then gives us. It's a little bit short, but pleasant. I'm kind of getting a lot of Tula Bardeen up first, it has to be said. Um, 
a little bit of sort of spicy sherry kind of coming through on, on the on the finish with possibly the Altmore kind of maltiness kind of packing out the mid palate. Um, there's no hard edges, it's not alcoholic, it's not hot, it's nicely balanced. Um, like I said, it's not the most complex of blends on the face of the planet, but then, it, like I said, it's only retailing for twenty six ninety five. So, um, in quality blended whiskey terms, that is, I think, yeah, a real bargain. So, yeah, good, good starter, I think. Okay, so let's step this up a little bit. Um, so the Spice Tree Extravaganza um, is suggested retail around about £100 a bottle. So yeah, we've kind of gone from sort of ridiculously cheap to quite quite expensive. So it's probably not... Let's just taste it, shall we? Quite dense. A um, lot of oak character, as you would expect. You've got the sort of tight, spicy grainy hybrid cast French oak sort of coming through it's a little bit of sherry sat in the background um, it's very mellow um, very soft certainly got a very highlandy kind of character that sort of granity honey it's taking a bit of time actually to open up and really need to give this a, a bit of air in actual fact and um, now we're starting to get some lovely vanilla, some apple, subtly spiced. It's not as kind of, it's not quite as in your face, so to speak, as, as the sort of standard bottling of spice tree. Um, the, the, the sort of oak spices are a lot mellower, a lot more in the background. It's a lot more rounded, softer, I'm getting a, a little bit of marzipan, banana, apricot. Yeah, more vanilla. There's a slight mentholated, almost minty kind of herbalness kind of coming through. Yeah, that that is fantastically good. That is really, really complex. Lots and lots going on there. Like I said, you sort of stick your nose in. You're getting something new each time. I mean, if you like spice tree, and I must admit, as you probably know, and I've probably said, I was never a really huge fan of the the original bottling um, but certainly um, post uh, shall we say the uh, Spice Wars <laughs> I've certainly uh, kind of grown to like it to be honest with you I think uh, I think it's it's certainly uh, just not quite so much of the sort of the French oak seems to just give it the subtle spiciness which is which is really nice so anyway let's uh, see what the palette gives us wonderfully soft. Kicks off with all the sort of soft, creamy, soft mm, vanillas. Uh, the American oak obviously sort of coming through right at the very beginning. A little bit of white chocolate, a uh, little bit of tight grainy spice and that spice starts to develop. You get an intermingling of, of that sort of uh, French oak with a little bit of sherry spice. And the sherry spice is kind of lingering on, getting a little bit of dried fruit kind of coming through right on the very end. Um, lots of, uh, of, of soft apricot-y, sort of apple-y, vanilla-y. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, that's a lovely mouthful. Again, like I said, it's got some lovely maturity to it, but it certainly has a, a crisp highland um, element to it. Uh, and the spices are really, really subtle, um, gentle, lingering. Mm, that is a fantastic blend, and hopefully we will have some of that in stock. Um, hopefully later, later this week. Unfortunately, like I said, I couldn't get ha get my hands on a bottle of the uh, uh, three year old blend. But I imagine if you're a huge Comfort Spot fan, you've probably already got one. So uh, anyway, but that is bloody good. Mm. Okay, so let's move on to the AD Rattray uh, bottling. It's probably maybe a little bit unfair as um, 
this was I think retailed for about half the price when uh, when we had it in stock. Um, but anyway, it's it's like I say, it's got a bit of a more in, so I thought well, I think it's probably probably the right point for it. I mean, you know, it's always difficult when you've got so many different styles of of, uh, of whiskey to taste to figure out exactly what uh, what way to put put them. So, but anyway, let's see what those goes. Quite heavy, oily, apricots, salt, citric, sort of oily, almost lemon cough sweet kind of bumore character coming through. For for wholly sherry matured malts, and I'm guessing that they probably were re refill sherry malts. Um, Casks because it's not a huge sherry monster as you can see from the the, the colour it's it's got a nice kind of burnished gold colour so it would indicate refill sherry casks there's a little bit of spiciness yeah I'm getting a little bit of the Ben Ryak kind of coming through with that again sort of crisp Speyside note a little bit of herbal fruit bit of soft peat um, not really getting any kind of Bamori violets, it's not in that kind of um, spectrum. Not really picking up a lot from the Ockentosh, it has to be said, but it's 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 all pleasantly rounded and I think I think the although the Isla component is not overwhelming, it's certainly the kind of focal point and which is often the case when you're using a peated malt in a blend. Let's see what the palette gives us. a lovely dusty but more sooty peaty finish a little bit more sherry on the palate in actual fact a little bit more of that sort of you know um, spicy dried fruit character it kind of kicks off actually with um, with the Ockentosh and I'm get, uh, get a little bit of that sort of high toned sort of Ockentosh and character um, but there's a lot more sherry a lot more spice dried fruits um, can't say I'm getting a lot from the Ben Ryak and um, the Bal Blair that does seem to have been not lost in the blend but it's kind of sort of just kind of a component um, and certainly I'm getting plenty of the Bamore on the finish uh, with that lovely sort of soft sooty peatiness um, nice intensity good crispness good balance um, yeah that's that was a, a, a lovely lovely blend and I remember we didn't sell buckets of it because it was Again, you know, one of those things where um, very rarely do, do customers come in and say, I'm looking for a blended whiskey. More often than not, they're looking for single malts, but sometimes you can talk them into these kind of things when uh, uh, you can be persuasive. But that, I think, although obviously not quite got the complexity of the, uh, the Compass Box bottling, is still a very, very good blend. Really like that. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Half Century blend, for the only uh, actual blended whiskey we've got today, so let's uh, see what those gives us. Obvious age. Um, dusty, mature, American oak, plenty of American oak, um, some crisp grain, there's also some grainy dried fruits as well. I think there's a little bit of sherry just saw just there. I think um, it's certainly grain centric um, with that sort of light. It's 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 a combination of that sort of lighter crisp graininess, that sort of maybe um, maybe Strathclyde, maybe Carsbridge, possibly might be a bit of Port Dundas heavier grain in there. Um, lots and lots of vanilla, bit of marzipan, wonderfully balanced. I mean, this is 50 years old and the vibrancy, and, and that is what the grain is giving it. That is the wonderful thing with old grains. Not only do they have that wonderful 
oxidized fruit, that um, uh, dried, almost rummy-like character, they can often still retain that real intense, crisp uh, graininess, which just really balances things up. Um, Yes, it's it's it does seem to be more like I said grain centric on the nose, um, but you know that is just wonderfully deep, really mature. This is the sort of whiskey that you just go, you just sniff it, and you just go, oh. bit of incense possibly coming through now, a bit of bit of earth. Mm, that is fantastic. Let's see what the, what the palate is like. Six hundred quid, and not a huge amount of sherry. And this is what I love about this particular blend: is that it's not kind of relying on really old sherry casks uh, for the complexity. I would guess there's a little bit of sherry in there because it has that little bit of sort of you know slightly raisinated fruit, that dried fruit, that spice. Um, but it's predominantly American oak aged. Um, you get that wonderful dusty old American oak character dried fruit from the um, from the grain again like I said grain centric um, so maybe it, I would guess it's probably no more than 50 50 molten grain and might be a little bit more grain certainly if it if, if it is less grain the grain is certainly punching above its weight shall we say um, lovely spiciness crispness from the grain as well as that sort of grainy dried fruit not it's a bit rummy but not hugely so all nicely sort of put together it lingers I mean the finish I'm still tasting it now while I'm talking to you and it's mmm mmm damn that is bloody good um, and like I said it's just not over reliant on really old sherry butts for for, for sort of interest uh, and I, I really like that I think that's that's seriously seriously impressive stuff <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, Lost Distilleries bottling. Now, I think I read somewhere that this, that, that I, I'm, I have, I think I tasted the Lost Distilleries blend, was it a blend? I, I forget now. Um, I don't know how much that was, but it's probably quite expensive now. From what I read, this is kind of classic, which I think they mean um, affordable. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's see what the nose gives us. I'm curious. It's, it's got some real youth to it. Um, uh, off the, not quite off the still, but we're kind of getting there. I mean, um, pungent cereal. I'm not getting a lot of sherry. I did read somewhere where uh, apparently the distillery used a lot of sherry, um, sherry butts, but then obviously that, at the time, talking 1800s, that would have been at the prevalent... Um, casks which were used because obviously sherry, cognac, armagnac, things like that were what they call early landed. They were obviously shipped over from France and, uh, and obviously sherry shipped over from Spain, uh, brought to the UK in casks and then bottled here in the UK. So lots and lots of those kind of casks knocking around, but I'm not getting a lot of that sherry character, if any at all, in actual fact. It's got a kind of Sort of Talisker esque kind of, um, possibly Talisker, maybe Kalila. I'm certain there's a bit of Kalila in there, um, but it's really very young, um, intense, a little bit of dusty peat, a um, bit of smoke, some, a lot of citrus. Um, it's interesting, it's, it's nice, it's a young Isla. Um, whether this was what loss it would produce, who who knows? I mean, it's it's pleasant. I don't know how much it's retailing for, but I'm guessing that, like I said, that the, it certainly smells quite young. I would guess that you're looking at the bulk of this is no more than five to eight years old, and it's like I said, it's got that slight off the still kind of character. 
um, that oiliness. Maybe there's a little bit of bamor in there, a little bit of you know, that citric note, kind of, citric character coming from the bamor possibly. Maybe there's a bit of Talisker. Um I'm not really getting any pepperiness, but I'm getting kind of that feel, if you see what I mean. Um, it's It's got some nice peat. I mean, it's yeah, it's pleasant. Um, I'm guessing that the interest is the whole backstory business with it, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, sort of you know, nosing it on its, on its own merits is pleasant. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. Let's uh, see what the palette uh, gives us in, shall we? Nice peaty finish, nice crisp, um, old school Corlila finish. Um, has it has kind of kicked off with that little bit of kind of almost leche like character, you know, that slight sort of damp cardboard, but not too overwhelming. Um, there's some lovely kind of dry, almost dry Bamori peat on, on the aftertaste. Um, doesn't really have any sort of like the, the kind of medicinal Lefroig uh, uh, kind of character. It doesn't certainly have any burnt woody kind of Ardbeggy kind of character. Um, so I'm guessing that there's a big chunk of Colila in there. There might be a bit of Lecce. I'm not really getting much Talisker-y kind of character on, on the palette. This is quite fun actually, trying to figure out what, what's gone into this blend. But like I said, it's, it does certainly remind me of, of Colila. Um, doesn't taste quite so young on the palate. There, there is, a, I think, um, a, a, a slightly mature element at work here, uh, although it's just kind of right in the background. It's quite malty, it's full. Uh, like I say, it's got the lovely freshness. It's got that old school Colila kind of freshness, which, you know, I really, really liked. Um, so it's a blend. I think that's that's quite quite pleasant. I mean... Hopefully that's not too expensive. Uh, it certainly doesn't taste like it should be particularly expensive. Maybe mid thirties, possibly early forties. I think that would be what I would expect to sort of uh, sell that for. But I honestly don't know. I've not kind of looked it up. Maybe I should have done. But yeah, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly a little bit. So uh, um, anyway, but yeah, yeah, I, perfectly, perfectly good blend. I think. And there is no way of getting And finally, we're on to the three-year-old, which is not really a three-year-old at all. It's more like plenty <coughs> something odd, um, which I'm not supposed to say. But ooh, mm. anyway, let's uh, let's see what the nose gives us. Oh, that, that is a lovely nose. Um, mature American oak, mature sherry, um, lovely kind of old peppery kind of character. Um, Quite salty, very sort of windswept, um, crystallised orange, um, touch of marmalade possibly. It's got a, a sort of edgy youthfulness which might be in the mind because I can't imagine that four percent of three-year-old uh, Klein Ellis is really going to have a huge amount of um, input onto this kind of soft, smoky, boom, the kind of character. Um, oh, this is gorgeous, absolutely wonderful. Um, but it has vibrancy, it has that sort of lovely kind of blend of, of, of smokiness, subtle peat, um, highland granity notes. Um, oh, that's just so, so well balanced. and. I mean, when you're dealing with peated and smoky kind of uh, malts, you know, it's often the case that, like I said, that they will be the focal point of the blend. And it's, you know, you've got to be really, really careful with, with the use of them. And um, oh, 
that has got some serious, serious age. I mean, I know how old the components actually are, although I'm not allowed to say. And I don't get this. Why can I tell you, what, or why can they tell me what malts are used in the spice tree, but I can't tell you what malts are used in the blend? Um, they can tell you what age. Uh, oh, just effing ridiculous. I mean, you know, they just, just say. Who cares? I mean, the Scotch Whiskey Association is not a legislative body. It is a protectionist racket scheme. Good, I'll give you that. You know, stop, you know, imports of, of stuff that is distilled from molasses and all that kind of stuff. Do your job. Great. But, you know, let sort of blenders and distillers and what have you just get on with what they're good at doing. You know, we've got so much, you know, issues with, with not Compass Box, Loch Lomond, all that kind of stuff. You know, they're just sticking their fingers in and their nose is where, they, really, they should be just letting people get on with what they want to do, you know. As all this traditional business is just, just kind of annoying the hell out of me, it has to be said. It's, um, but anyway, you know, we'll, we'll, enough of that. Let's, 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 let's focus on the good whiskey, you know. At the end of the day, really, does it matter whether it's called a three-year-old blend? We know it's not a three-year-old blend in reality. We know it's bloody good. Um, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And this is just sensational um i can't remember what the um rrp with for this was oh yes this was about 200 pound bottle and um oh, you can just smell that all the oil of sky malt coming through in absolute spades god that's gorgeous that's uh oh oh okay a little bit of sherry herb on this there oh let's uh, see what the palette gives us They got some fantastic casks of old grass um, to go in that blend. It has to be said, um, dusty peat, slightly marmalady orange, um, salt, baked fruit, some lovely spicy sherry cask, and, and considering that the um, I think the bulk of that was um, refilled hoggy, the sherry is quite there, but it's it's just all nicely contained um, again it's got that sort of granity note that you would expect from from the Highland malts um, but it's got a lovely smokiness as well and it's it's kind of wood smoke and peat smoke and dust and mmm mmm hell that is that is stunning I mean if you've got hold of a bottle of that then you know um, Oh, and you're gonna love that. That is absolutely stunning. Um, so hats off to John Glazer and, and Compass Box for yet another outstanding whiskey. Really good. Okay, so let's sum today's tasting up. Um, hopefully, this again has demonstrated the you know complexity that you can gain from um, blending together malt and grain, different ages, different sources, all that kind of stuff. I think the old Perth, like I said, was a lovely entry level blend. It's certainly, I could certainly pick up on several of the different characteristics. I mean, uh, not particularly old, but you know, really, really nicely balanced. Spice Tree, yep, loved that. I mean, it was a little bit more subtle than the, um, the sort of standard spice tree bottling, which I don't think was a bad thing. Um, loads and loads of wood character, which is what you would expect, because I mean, this is the whole point of spice tree, um, but it's not the overwhelming factor. There are some other malt characters that, that come through, so it's not just all about the wood. The AD rat tray bottling, yeah, good, good bottling. Um, probably showcasing more the fact that um, the component blends were kind of maybe playing a supporting role to the, uh, the the Isla component but again the Isla component although being fairly central was not kind of overwhelming and I've tasted certain blends um, that have you know a, a, an Isla component which just kind of vaporizes everything else and all you can taste is the Isla you know it's just like well what's the point you may as well just bottle the Isla um, at least 
the other components were giving a bit of character coming kind of coming through. The the Lost uh, not the Lost series uh, the um, uh, half century blend, lovely old American oak age, maybe a little bit of sherry, just just wonderfully old. Probably like I said, maybe more heavy on on the, the grain, but as you know, I love old grain whiskey, so to me, not an issue at all. Really, really good quality. Um, the classic uh, Losset. It was young. It's Isla. It's pleasant. Um, whether it's you know indicative of what the distillery actually produced who who, who knows you know uh, unless you actually can build yourself a time machine and go back you, you're not going to know but taking it on its own merits a pleasant young isla centric blend probably you know like i said might add a bit of talisman probably not in actual fact thinking about it but certainly um mainly coal either i would guess uh with possibly a little bit of bamore in there there might be something else uh, lurking in there that I couldn't quite pick up but certainly I think those were probably the, the, the two malts that were most prominent in there. And um, the three-year-old deluxe, well like I said if you pick yourself up a bottle of that then phew, stunning whiskey, absolutely stunning um, and um, I'm going to finish this off, <laughs> thank you very much. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the show, uh, it's certainly been a lot of fun uh, from my point of view and I hope you've enjoyed it as well. So. Uh, all that's left to saying is uh, good afternoon and good ramming. <laughs>